This computer mouse used to be great, but now the plastic has turned into this tacky, sticky goo. Same goes for the handle of this umbrella in this solar-powered flashlight. So many tech gadgets nowadays are covered in plastics that degrade over time and make the product unusable. I recently did a video about using gasoline to clean that surface off, but in the comments of that video, I got hammered by so many people that said that that was an idiotic idea and there were so many better solvents out there. So in this video, I'm gonna put those solvents to the test. We're taking the top recommendations from you guys and we're gonna compare them against gasoline and see which which really works best at getting your gear back into action. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Despite the fact that it looks like I'm about to teach you how to do something that's gonna get this video taken down from YouTube, what this video is really about is how to remove that disgusting, sticky, gummy, tacky coating that develops on electronics, on uh, little gadgets and gizmos, on things like uh, sunglasses. Uh, you know, Whenever you get these kind of products that have this kind of finished coat that after a couple of years or even less than that oftentimes, they start getting sticky and tacky and disgusting. You don't even wanna to touch that stuff anymore. I'm gonna talk about how to clean that stuff off. I recently did a video where I talked about gas as being something you could use. I searched for decades trying to figure out how to do this, and I accidentally chanced across the idea that gas could work for it. I'll share a little bit later in this video how I stumbled across that. But I made a video about that immediately because it took me so long to just figure that out that I wanted to share that with as many people as possible. And a lot of you guys were really appreciative of me having put that out there because this has been a big thing for a lot of us. We get these things that we love using and then suddenly they just degrade in our hands and it's been really frustrating for so many people. So people appreciated my sharing that. A lot of people really hated the video and shot it down because the video was at three minutes was just, it's just too long too long for some people. Some people's attention spans, I guess, don't go, don't, don't even go up to three minutes. But the vast majority of people really appreciated that, just like I would have appreciated if I could have come across that video years ago when I was searching for this information and I just couldn't find it. I got a lot of feedback on that video and a lot of people mentioned other things that they had used that they thought had been successful. So in this video, what I want to do is kind of compare all these different things across the board. Uh, they're going to have different pros, different cons. The only one I've really tried is gasoline and isopropyl alcohol. Gasoline works for me and isopropyl alcohol never did. But I'm going to give it another try in this video just because a bunch of people said that it worked for them. And I don't know whether maybe there are different mixes of what is in this kind of sticky tacky stuff. Maybe some stuff is alcohol soluble and other stuff isn't. Or maybe it might just be a case where people put alcohol on a rag and were rubbing away at the stuff. And maybe it was just the physical process of the rubbing and the alcohol was uh, incidental. It didn't even need to be there. I don't really know what the background is on it, but I am going to try alcohol in this as well. So we're going to try gasoline. We're going to try isopropyl alcohol. Two of the really popular things that were mentioned a lot, and I'm excited about them, and I'm just going to learn about them with you guys because I haven't tried them yet myself, is lighter fluid. Zippo lighter fluid, which is, oh, I wanted to, I wanted to prepare ahead of the, doing this video, but I forgot. It, th there's another name for it, uh, N-A-P-H-T-H-A, naphtha. I guess. Uh, lighter fluid, uh, also known perhaps, unless I'm mispronouncing it, as naphtha. Uh, that is something a lot of people had success with. And allegedly, I've never used a lighter, uh, but allegedly this stuff doesn't stink like gasoline and it's I, also allegedly less, uh, less health, um, health impacts uh, from that. You know, I, I don't honestly know. All of this stuff is hazardous stuff. I think you should just be careful with all of it. Uh, you know, people quarreling over like, you know, this is, you know, this one's a little bit more dangerous than this one, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna get into that. Be careful with all these things. The other thing that a lot of people, obviously it's like right here in your face, uh, WD-40. A lot of people mentioned using WD-40 to get this stuff off and uh, I thought that was a, you know, a great thing to try as well. Uh, before we jump into this though, what I wanted to discuss a little bit more than I discussed in the other video is what this is for and what this is not for. What it's useful for is when you have a hard bodied plastic that gets some kind of a finish coating and the finish coating itself, a thin finish coating, uh, ends up breaking down and becoming gooey. It's not for something that is entirely made out of a material like these kind of kitchen tools. This is made by OXO. They make these rubberized handles and these are notorious for getting sticky and tacky. This one's shedding something. It's getting on my hands every time that I use a thing and I'm working with food, so that's not a great uh, situation. It used to have all these little uh, fins in the side, but they've all just degraded and I've ripped all those things off. Uh, so 
items like this, these aren't a piece of plastic, like hard plastic, and then covered over. Uh, these are pure whatever this material is that's degrading and breaking down. And for that reason, you can't just take a surface treatment and wipe off the surface and expect for that to be a solution because the next layer down is the same stuff and the next layer down from there is the same stuff and it just goes all the way down. It's like tortoises all the way down. What you ultimately end up with is something like this. This is an ice cream scoop and I just had it tear the whole handle right off of it. Now there was a residue that was left from the decaying handle and I was able to clean that up with gasoline. But on items like this where the entire material of whatever it is that you're talking about is this disgusting degrading stuff, you know, you end up having to just remove all of it and then replace it with something else. Just uh, wiping the surface of it isn't gonna solve your problem for you. Here are a couple of things that I treated in the other video. This is a pair of binoculars. These are made just with a regular plastic. Uh, I was able to take the finish coat off and now it's a nice, perfectly smooth, totally comfortable in my hands uh, tool to use. Uh, I also had to treat the bag that it was in because, because they were sticky. Uh, it had gotten stickiness inside the bag, so I, I treated the inside of the bag. This is all with gasoline. Uh, I also had a flashlight that I was, uh, was treating and one interesting thing about this flashlight is that while the decals like the painting uh, labels uh, logos and things like that on the binoculars were taken off with the gasoline on this flashlight uh, all the the labeling stayed so you know sometimes when you're using gasoline to clean the stuff off you might take off uh, printed information on there depending on whether it's soluble in gasoline or not and sometimes maybe you won't so these are the items that I was, was able to clean off in that video and this was all using gasoline. So let's jump in and let's start doing some tests on this. I'm going to start from uh, uh, the isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to move through WD-40 and then the Zippo lighter fluid and then we're going to do gasoline last. The reason I chose this order is because they go from the least uh, fumes <laughs> up to the greatest fumes. Again, I, I don't know if Zippo lighter fluid has any fumes, but it's very close to the gasoline. So I'm going to save that for the last. Uh, so we're going to start with the isopropyl alcohol and I've got this 50 uh, percent mix of it here and I've got a, a cloth to put it on. Now let's talk a little bit about PPE. Uh, PPE is personal protective equipment and for this I'm going to be wearing one rubber glove on the action hand. Uh, you also could consider, especially if you're using gasoline, uh, to wear a respirator. This is a P, well this is a P95, but you could wear a P95 or a P100 respirator. That's going to filter out some of the fumes uh, because, you know, I, I don't argue the fact that gasoline, it's a, it's a harmful toxic substance and you don't want to have a bunch of that going into your body, either by absorbing into your skin or by going into your lungs. So, you know, you, be, you should be cautious with it. I'm not going to use the respirator during this video. I'm going to take a hit for the team just so so you can hear me a little bit more clearly. Uh, but if you were gonna do this, I would suggest doing this outside. I would suggest uh, doing this uh, with a respirator. I would definitely suggest having a glove on. And if you do decide to use gasoline, you gotta remember, you know, I, I didn't put a lot of safety warnings in the other video either, because I'm like, it's gasoline. Everyone knows that gasoline's dangerous. But, you know, maybe, maybe not everybody. Uh, gasoline is, it's flammable, if you didn't know that. The fumes can be flammable. The last time I worked uh, with a bunch of uh, gasoline in an enclosed space, this actually relates to my little accident oops story where I discovered this might be useful for this. There was electricity running to that space. I killed the breaker running uh, to that space because if somebody went in and flipped a light switch, you can get a little spark, a little arc inside the light switch. It could ignite the whole thing and you know blow the whole shed that I was up in uh, up apart. So. You gotta treat this stuff with respect because it's dangerous. I, I, th I figure everyone knows that, but maybe not everybody knows that. Okay, so starting with the alcohol, I'm gonna put a little bit more on here. Being 50%, it didn't evaporate super, super fast. The higher the percentage of alcohol, the faster it's gonna evaporate off on you. In fact, that's one of the tricky things about uh, when you get into the higher percentage alcohols is they uh, evaporate off really, really fast. Okay, so I'm just doing a little swirling motion here. I don't know, maybe so far so good. Uh, it's feeling a little bit less tacky, but that could just be because it's wet. I mean, it'd be nice if isopropyl works. I know that I've, I've definitely used isopropyl alcohol in the past on, uh, on other items and it just didn't do anything at all. So there might just be different mixes. Put a little bit more on here. I should put this in a cup and then dip this into the cup so I'm not polluting back into the isopropyl, but I'm being a little sloppy here. Well, you know, this isopropyl, I don't know, maybe it is working in this case. 
It might be. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to the idea. I, I'm always happy when I can learn a new thing for the day. Okay, so uh, I give that one more, one more little wipe. It still feels a little bit gummy. And again, this might be a kind of situation where you would want to really let this soak a little bit longer. All right. Okay, I think we're going to call that done. Okay, I might be done using the alcohol on the back of that laptop, but given the fact that it seems like it might be working, that suggests a degree of variability where some materials might be more susceptible to different solvents than others. So I wanted to revisit the alcohol and a couple of things that I had trouble with that didn't seem to be able to be cleaned with the alcohol, namely uh, these binoculars that I've had for a while, which I cleaned with gasoline in the other video. There were some parts of these that I did not bother to do with the gas because they're near the lenses and I was a little bit nervous around that. So we're going to go in there with the alcohol. In all also, the surface of this hard drive has been tacky for a while. I've tried alcohol on this, it ha and it's still, it's still been tacky even after the use of the alcohol. So we're going to try the alcohol on these two items and just see if I can get some different results. And that, that is one thing that I think is really important to consider when it comes to the idea of you know, a video like this. It might seem like a you know, video where you have someone telling you, you know, this works and that doesn't work. Uh, you know, those are conclusive results. But one thing that uh, limits you know, people like an individual is your data set. Uh, it's important to have a very broad data set. The more narrow your data set is, the less reliable the results are. If I were to only test on the back of that laptop, those results would be uh, applicable to that particular laptop, but you know, maybe not to other things. All right, so I'm using the isopropyl alcohol on these, and you know what? It's working pretty darn well. This is a lot better than it did before. And that's some extra data, because I know that I've used alcohol on these specific uh, binoculars before, and it did nothing. So the variable in that case, it's not the solvent, it's not the item being treated, but time is the variable in this case. Yeah, that seems like it's it seems like it's taking it off. Time would be the variable in this case, where perhaps when these things first start to degrade, uh, maybe at least in the case of these binoculars, alcohol is not a appropriate way of cleaning these things off. But maybe as the rubber or whatever the rubberized coating degrades more and more, and someone recently in the comments told me what the technical uh, name for that is. Dehistification, it might have been, <laughs> I don't know if that's what it was. Um, maybe as that progresses, it becomes uh, you know, more vulnerable to other solvents, because I know for a fact I used uh, isopropyl alcohol on these binoculars in the past, and it did absolutely nothing. Now you could say, well, you hit them with gasoline and that softened it up, so, uh, you know, now the alcohol is taking off, but that's not the case on the inside here. The inside area here, I didn't want to touch that with gasoline because it was so close to the lenses. I didn't want to get any gas on the lenses. And uh, yeah, now the, uh, the alcohol is clean that up. So the key take home from this is that there, there are just an awful lot of variables. So I, I think whatever are going to be the results of cleaning off the laptop, I would suggest go through a number of solvents and probably start with something like isopropyl alcohol because in certain circumstances it seems like it works. Maybe not uh, at all times, but certainly uh, during certain circumstances it might work just fine. And it's a heck of a lot less toxic and less dangerous than gasoline. So you start with this kind of stuff. If it doesn't work, you can move yourself up to some of the more, uh, the more beefy solutions. Okay, so let's go back to the video. The next thing on our list is WD-40. And because I didn't want to waste time trying to dump this out, during the video, I put some WD-40 into this little cup, and we're gonna try this section here with WD-40. And the real, the real um, uh, aha moment is gonna be after all this stuff kind of dries away. And that uh, brings me to an, uh, one of the big critiques that I got on the gasoline video is that people that I think probably have never interacted with gasoline before, um, although they talk like uh, internet experts, uh, kept saying something along the lines of, well, it's great, you, uh, you got the stickiness off, but then it smells like gas forever. And that's exactly the voice that they use too. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I mean, gasoline, the reason that it smells so much is because it evaporates really rapidly. And uh, because it's evaporating so rapidly, it doesn't, the smell doesn't last that long. I, I think a lot of the, these people, they just haven't been outside. 
they haven't interacted with their world and they don't, they don't know the gasoline uh, evaporates off pretty quickly. Um, in my experience with the binoculars that I had and the, the flashlight, it was like after one or two days, it was like 99%, uh, all the smell was gone. And then after another week, you, you wouldn't even ever know. In fact, the, the bag that the binoculars came in, it's, it's not like a cotton bag, it's some kind of a synthetic polymer bag, but uh, it got gooiness inside of it from the binoculars being in there. So I had to clean out the bag too, and that's kind of a fabric, so that's gonna take longer to lose its smell. And even with that, it was only like maybe, it was less than a week before the bag itself stopped smelling. Okay, so that's the WD-40. Uh, it seems maybe on par with uh, the alcohol. So I'm gonna uh, just place that over here. Now the Zippo lighter fluid. I'm interested in seeing how this one works out. Other things that people tried were peanut butter. Uh, someone mentioned peanut butter and having success with that. I'm not gonna test peanut butter here because uh, they described uh, needing it to you know, soak for some amount of time. Um, and, and people also used physical. Uh, that smells, that smells. People were like, Zippo lighter fluid doesn't have any smell at all. I don't, know. I don't know, maybe you lost your sense of, you know what Zippo lighter fluid smells like? It smells like the city. And uh, a lot of people live in the city. It's like maybe they're like a fish in water and they, they, they stop smelling it after a while. Out here in the country, yeah, you, you can smell that. It's kind, of, it's kind of a sweet smell. All right. You know, given its uh, similarity to gasoline, I was thinking that the Zippo lighter fluid was gonna work really well, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's, well, we'll find out at the end. Doing the same thing with all these, just kind of rubbing and seeing if kind of goop comes off of it. With the gasoline, it was pretty clear because I put it on, you could see the black from the binoculars coming off onto the rags. All right. It still feels, you know, when you, you have a tacky substance and you rub a cloth over it, you can kind of feel that it's, it's, uh, oh, well, I'm getting some blue on here. Uh, you can kind of feel that it still has kind of like some stickiness there. Now I wanted to jump away again to get a little bit more data on this item right here. This is a small portable hard drive and it's been tacky for many years. Now after the alcohol finally ended up working on my binoculars where it hadn't worked before, I thought, well, maybe the alcohol might uh, clean this surface up. Alcohol is not enough to get this off. It's still tacky even after treating it with alcohol. So let's step this up. I'm presuming that maybe the gas would work, although you know you only know, until, you know after you test. But uh, what I'd like to do is uh, test this out with uh, WD. 40 and with lighter fluid. So I've got some WD-40 in this cup right here. I'm going to put it on this cloth and I'm going to test uh, the left hand side of this with WD-40 and see what that does. So over here on, on your left, giving that a scrub and we're going to see. And of course the WD-40, it does leave a little bit of a, a residue on there. It's kind of its point. Give that a good scrubbing there. Okay, I'll, I may come back to that afterwards, but for now that seems okay. Uh, and I'll use this cloth. This was my old gas cloth, some of the dry part of it. I'll wipe off the excess. Okay, so far it's, you know, it's hard to tell with WD-40 because it leaves, it leaves that, that oily residue on it. So we'll see in a sec. And I wanna try the lighter fluid also. So I'm gonna put some lighter fluid on this rag that I'd used with the lighter fluid earlier, I believe. Okay, get that on there. I do like the ease of dispensing the lighter fluid. So lighter fluid now, you'll notice I'm not, I'm not going with the gloves because I'm not gonna be doing gasoline here. All right, and lighter fluid over, over this side. I'm hoping one of these will work. I know a lot of people were ripping into the other video because of the health impacts of gas. Yeah, gas is toxic. Certainly wasn't my, my hope that gas would be the only thing that would work on everything. I was just reporting what uh, the data that I'd collected had uh, suggested to me. I think a lot of times people confuse that idea that uh, because a messenger is uh, giving you information that that's the information they wanted to be true. Okay, that seems like it did it. I'm gonna brush that off with this dry cloth first. The lighter fluid seems like it, it did take off the tackiness. 
You know what? I think we're gonna have to come back to this later. I, I wanna let this thing really dry off because the WD-40 side is a little oily and the uh, Zippo lighter fluid side is, still doesn't feel totally dried. Let's come back to this in a little bit. And the last thing is the gasoline. And I didn't pour the gasoline out because it, it definitely smells. So I wanted to wait to do that. So let's get some gas in this cup, just a little. And again, you don't wanna be <laughs> smoking. A lot of people joked about, you know, don't smoke while you do that. And I joked back, maybe you should never smoke. I think people complaining about like the health impacts of uh, gasoline and saying it'd be a problem if you're a smoker. <laughs> like, if you're a smoker, like there's some pretty low hanging fruit there that you could uh, implement in your own life for, uh, for health benefits. Okay, cool. So gasoline, again, this would be a real good time to have that respirator on, but all this stuff is hazardous. All right, gasoline on the rag going on here. This definitely has a different feel than the other things. It's gone right to being smooth. It doesn't have any of that kind of like scraping over or rubbery surface. Apparently gasoline as a cleaner is not at all uncommon. Lots of mechanics will use gasoline to clean off engine parts and things like that. So um, I guess it's not super novel. I'm gonna mention my story about why I thought to even use gasoline. Uh, we get termites in our house and I've never dealt with termites before. And um, because of that, uh, I didn't really know how to deal with them. I had been looking uh, recently into uh, different uh, ways of making your own um, uh, wood treatment uh, types of things for, uh, you know, kind of sort of uh, home DIY pressure treating of wood. And I, uh, one of them was using diesel fuel and old motor oil mixed together and it kind of make like a stain from that. And you can use that to treat wood so critters don't want to chew in it. So all I really had was gasoline and I had termites eating apart part of my shed, the shed that I said that I was in. And I was thinking, well, you know, it's, as long as I don't ignite the place up, I think I'm gonna use gasoline. And gasoline worked really, really well for killing the termites. Just killed on contact, all the fumes killed them. I was wearing respirators for that. I turned off the power to the shed. And it worked super, super well. It got rid of the problem. It was not the best way of doing it. And I would highly recommend other ways of approaching that problem. Uh, in fact, I'll make a video later on my channel about specifically what I did uh, related to the, uh, the termites. But the reason that I learned that gas might be good for dissolving things away is because I have foam insulation around my shed and the gas that spilled down out of where the termites were into the foam insulation completely dissolved the foam insulation away. And it got me thinking, well, if gas can dissolve that kind of plastic, I wonder if it'd be effective for this type of thing. And you know, if the chickens would stop clucking, uh, maybe you'd hear it, it's squeaky clean. Okay, so it's been a while and even after letting the surface dry off, the Zippo lighter fluid side and the WD-40 side still feel like they've got a little bit of a tack to them. So uh, I think you can probably guess what I'm gonna try next given that I have a rubber glove on. Uh, I'm gonna try popping some gasoline on here and see if that will take off what is here. So uh, this is the rag I was using for gasoline. I'll just put a little bit on here. My, my preference, like any sane person, is that uh, the least harmful material as possible would be you know, functional here. So I don't like the idea that gasoline oftentimes seems like it's the only thing that really, really cleans things down super well. It's not the way I would like the world to be. It just might be the way that it is. All right, going all over that. Of course, you know, I don't have a glove on the other hand. and I'm handling this thing. Although the, the gasoline, it really does evaporate off really quickly. Okay, yeah, yeah, the gasoline finished it off. The gasoline got the rest off. Now it just feels like regular plastic. So yeah, you know, well, a lot of these other solvents do seem to, you know, work pretty well. You know, not, certainly I don't give them zeros. Yeah, the gasoline seems so much, so much stronger. Now, are there things that aren't lighter fluid and aren't WD-40 and aren't gasoline that might be kind of the best of both worlds where, uh, you know, you have a really effective product and it doesn't have all the health impacts of gasoline? Maybe, let me know in the comments below if you think you know of one of these. 
I'd like to stick to things that are easy for people to source. Uh, people have mentioned something called uh, pharmaceutical petroleum or pharmaceutical gasoline or something like that. I, I think it's used for, what was it used for? I forget what they said it was used for. Um, that's not the kind of thing that I feel like I've run across in like every corner drugstore. So I'm trying to stick with things that people generally have access to. Believe it or not, a lot of people complain that it's like, how are you gonna get gasoline? I don't know, here in the United States, it's like kind of available everywhere. It, it, it's like uh, it's like shotguns down here. You go to you know your corner drugstore, you can get gasoline and a shotgun around here in the United States. Um, I don't know, maybe there are places in the world where people can't guess, get gasoline. Um, it's uh, not hard to get around here. But uh, at the moment, it seems like it's the most effective way of really getting uh, you know the most stuff off. But I'm always open to improvements. I'm always open to suggestions. And if you have any after this video, I want to hear about them in the comments below. Gas is squeaky clean, so that gasoline works. I already knew that. Zippo lighter fluid. Okay. The Zippo stuff, it's still tacky. It's still a little tacky, and it still has the rubberized coating on it. The gasoline got rid of the rubberized coating, and it's down to, well, I don't know. It's, there's still a little bit of gummy plastic, but it really cleaned it off a lot better. The gasoline cleaned it off better than the Zippo lighter fluid. And again, maybe if you did these things for longer, you could get similar results with the Z uh, Zippo lighter fluid. In fact, if you wanna stick around, maybe I'll do a little bit more. Let's see the WD-40. Well, the WD-40 is a little hard to tell because it leaves, it leaves a, a kind of oily coating on there, which is kind of ironic because there are a bunch of people that were telling me I was such an idiot for using gasoline because it leaves residue. Uh, you should use WD-40 and the WD-40 one, that's got the residue. I mean, that one feels okay. Yeah, okay. The, the WD-40 one definitely feels smoother than the Zippo lighter fluid one. Gas is pristine. Ga gas, gasoline was perfect. Zippo lighter fluid, it doesn't feel as tacky, but it still has kind of a, it still has a gumminess to it. I think maybe more rubbing might help with that, and I'll do that later in this video. WD-40, it feels about like the Zippo lighter fluid, but with that oily kind of coating on it, which um, is getting in my fingers right now. And you know, there's health implications related to that. Um, so I think that this WD-40 and Zippo are probably kind of similar, but the WD-40 leaves a residue, which makes it so it doesn't really feel uh, sticky. It's kind of like if you have um, like some stickers and you get them wet and you have, or you have a wet hand they're not gonna feel sticky just because of that wetness. The oil on there, I think is preventing the feeling of stickiness. The isopropyl alcohol, you know, the isopropyl isn't, isn't bad. I would say the isopropyl, the isopropyl alcohol feels about on par with the WD-40, which is really at odds with a lot of other experiences that I've had with isopropyl alcohol. Hey, YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right-hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.